Well, good afternoon. It's good to see you all. It's good to be here with you as we continue on with our Live Better series. And as you all remember, a key theme of our Live Better series is that I can live a vital and meaningful life, huh? That we can live a vital life. We can be really alive. As we get into recovery, we can be really alive and that our life has meaning, that we have a purpose here on this planet, that our life is meaningful and that we are connected with life and with other people. That's a, a key theme for all of our classes. And then specifically today, we're taking a look at two really important attitudes. I think you'd agree with me. We're going to be taking a look at the attitude of gratitude as well as the attitude of self-compassion. Two really important things. And of course, we're going to be looking at that within the perspective of acceptance and commitment therapy and the image that we have on our worksheets. Huh? Let's revisit that for a minute. So the bluebird here, the bluebird of happiness, is a reminder to us, yes, I can live a vital and meaningful life. No matter how difficult my life has been, no matter how many problems I have had in my life or I do have in my life, I can lead a vital and meaningful life. Now, a couple things about doing that are the new pair of glasses. See the glasses right there? So the new pair of glasses, it's a reminder to us that saying, with humility, I now need to be open-minded. I need to be willing to look at life in a new way. Because the old way I've been looking at life and myself and other people, it hasn't been working. So I need to put on a new pair of glasses and start to see my life and other people and life in a new way. Now, along with that, a really key concept that you'll remember is the Chinese finger trap, huh? And you'll remember with the Chinese finger trap that we have right here is that we know this from kids we were on the playground the first time somebody gave us this and we tried to get our fingers out of there. We got stuck, didn't we? So that's a good lesson for life, isn't it? The more we fight against life, the more stuck we are. The more we fight against life, the more stuck we are. So the answer is, is to relax and let go and accept. Accept ourselves as we are, accept other people as they are, accept life as they are, and when we accept, all of a sudden we're free, huh? So acceptance, don't struggle, accept what is as it is. And then of course, as we're accepting what is as it is, we have the beach ball that we've been pushing underwater. Thoughts and feelings that we've been trying to avoid or control. Saying, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to look at that. I don't want to have, but so instead in recovery, we say, I'm going to let that beach ball come up and sit right here with me on the top of the water. And we find out it's not so scary. That we can deal with our thoughts that are scary, anxious, depressing, sad. The other thing that we find is when we let the beach ball come up, all the good things that we've been pushing underwater too, like gratitude and joy and connectedness and love, that starts to come up too. So by having the courage to let go of psychological avoidance and control, and let that beach ball come up, we're able to face our demons, plus we're now able to experience some of the really good things in life that we've been shutting ourselves off from. Then once we let the beach ball come up, then we ask ourselves, now what am I going to do about this? And that's where the one, two, three comes in, huh? One, two, three. And what that stands for is, what, what's most important in my life? So we're learning with ACT therapy to have our feelings without our feelings having us. Which means sometimes we might have feelings or avoidance or control, anger, rage, wanting to get drunk, high, loaded, but we don't let our feelings run our lives, do we? We let our values run our life, our one, two, three. What are my values? What's most important to me? I'm going to act on that. I'm not going to act on my feelings necessarily. I'm going to act on my values. 
And so I want to be clear on what my values are. And today, I'm going to ask you to be taking a look at two things as values for you to consider. One is to look at gratitude as a value. That for us to say, you know, being a person who has gratitude and manifests gratitude by paying it forward and making life better for other people and myself, having that kind of gratitude is important to me. I want to be that kind of a person rather than the opposite. Now let's think for a minute. Let's think for a minute. Let me see now. What's the opposite of gratitude? So when we think about that, the opposite of gratitude would be like self-pity, like poor me, poor me. Instead of I'm grateful for this, it's like poor me. It's envying other people for what they have. It's being jealous of other people. It's being angry about life. And it's also holding everything in for ourselves and not sharing our talents and our gifts and our blessings in life with other people, but being really stingy. And whatever we get, we hoard it and keep it for ourselves in a self-centered way. So, of course, I don't think any of us wants to be that kind of a person, right? Self-pitying, angry, envy, jealous, stingy. So the opposite of that is to be grateful, to have a grateful heart and a grateful attitude. So that's one value I want to talk with you about in a minute. But the other value later in the class we're going to talk about is having self-compassion. And we're going to talk about compassion in general, like how we care for other people and our heart goes out to them. But self-compassion also is caring about myself, not in a selfish or self-centered way, but in a self-loving way. That it's okay for us to love ourselves and care about ourselves. Now, we always want to go about living our life every day being mindful, don't we? Being aware. Letting our thoughts and feelings come up and dealing with those. So before we enter into today these two topics of an attitude of gratitude and an attitude of self-compassion, I'd like us to go ahead and go through the Act Mindfully meditation. And you can either close your eyes and just follow along with me or you can read along with me. And by the way, I recommend to a lot of people that come to the class, or they're my patients and they see me in individual counseling, I really ask everybody to read this once a day, especially in the morning to get grounded and centered and balanced. But let's go ahead and walk through this. Accepting, choosing, committing, and taking action. Accept what is as it is. Slowly take a few deep breaths. Let's do that now. Let's take a couple of deep breaths. Allow your thoughts and feelings to emerge and just be there. The ones you like and the ones you don't like. Take a few more deep breaths. Let's do that now. And just let your thoughts and feelings be there. Take a few more deep breaths. Let's do that. And let your thoughts and feelings be there. Not judging them and not trying to make them go away. Just let your thoughts and feelings be there. Accepting your thoughts and feelings does not mean you like them, and it doesn't mean you like the situation. Just let your thoughts and feelings be there. Let the situation be there. And then settle into accepting what is as it is. If you're having a hard time accepting what is as it is, go ahead and accept that you're having a hard time accepting what is as it is. That you really wish that things were different, your feelings were different, the situation was different, but it's not. But you're willing to go ahead and accept what is as it is. And you're willing to go ahead and accept that you're having a hard time accepting what is. 
After accepting what is, focus on what's important to you. Is there something about this that you want to change? Do you want to change your perspective or do you want to change the situation? What do you want to change? If you think you can make the change, develop and plan a strategy and make the change you discern would be good. Do Nike therapy, just do it. <laughs> Don't procrastinate, just do it. However, if you can't change the situation and you're struggling with your perspective, let it go. See yourself just letting it go. Let go. Just let it go. Let it go for today. Just let it be. Let it go and move on. Say yes to life. And focus your attention on other people and other activities that you value. Okay? So again, you guys, this is a nice little, it only takes four minutes to read this every day. And I hope you had this experience. I know a lot of people that I work with will say, yeah, Tom, it helps me get, in the morning especially, it helps me get grounded and centered and balanced as I'm getting ready to go out and live my life that day. Okay? So that's a good resource for us. So let's go ahead now and let's take a look at this idea of an attitude of gratitude. So here again, this idea of a new pair of glasses. When we're talking about gratitude, we're, all, we're talking about how am I looking at my life today, huh? Do I have a pair of glasses on where I say, wow, I'm so blessed. I have this to be grateful for and this to be grateful for and this to be grateful for and I'm grateful for this person and I'm grateful for that. That is a pair of glasses that we wear. Now again, we could have our pair of glasses on where we're cursing and we're full of self-pity and I want this and I want that and life isn't fair and why did this happen to me and the heck with life, the heck with everybody else and why does he have that and why does she have that and I want that and I need this and I want more of that. We can have that pair of glasses, that's a choice, huh? But hopefully if we're being mindful and we're finding ourselves with envy and jealousy and self-pity, we'll catch ourselves and we'll go, whoa, 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 Tom, wait a minute, Tom. Slow down. Look at where your thinking is. Come on back here. Don't, don't let that train keep going down those tracks, Tom. Bring it back. Bring it back. Think about what do I have to be grateful for today? What do I have to be grateful for today? And then very mindfully, we stop and think about it. And when we do that, we're looking, again, the choice, huh? Am I going to look at the glasses half full or half empty, huh? Am I going to take a look at what's not there? Or are we going to take a look at what's there? It's really our choice. How we're, and the choice that we make really determines our life. It determines where we're at in our head, where we're at in our heart, where we're at in our relationships. Because you know this yourself, don't you? When we have an attitude of gratitude, things go better for us. Life goes better when we can nurture that attitude of gratitude. But when we're full of self-pity or resentment or envy, our spirit goes in a downward cycle and our emotions follow with it and our mind goes there too. And a lot of times we relapse then. So it's a choice. It's a pair of glasses. And then I'm choosing to look at what do I have to be grateful for today? Now, this is such an important lesson. You probably already know this, but I want to run this by you because a lot of people I've worked with over the years, they didn't know this. In fact, for many years of my life, I didn't know this. I wish I would have known this when I was younger. And that is that gratitude is a wonderful feeling, huh? Those days when we're grateful and things are going our way, zippity doo dah, this is, wow, I'm glad to be alive. It's a great day and I'm, I'm grateful for this and I'm grateful for that. When, tho when those days are, are like that, they're just wonderful, aren't they? However, something I didn't know is that gr we can have a feeling of gratitude, but fundamentally gratitude 
is not a feeling, it's an attitude. And the difference is, when gratitude is an attitude, I can have an attitude of gratitude even on those days when I'm not zippity doo da, huh? Maybe I didn't get a good night's sleep. Maybe I haven't had anything to eat in 24 hours. Maybe two or three people that are really important to me in my life are mad at me or they don't like me. Maybe a lot of things aren't going my way. So on a feeling level, I'm not feeling so hot, huh? I'm having a hard time today. It's a rough day. Maybe I've lost somebody important to me. I just lost my job. I lost my best friend. My wife says she wants a divorce. Our dog is sick and dying. So on bad days, when our feelings are really hurting, we can still have an attitude of gratitude. Now that doesn't mean we invalidate our feelings. We say, you know what? On a feeling level, I'm having a hard day. I don't like this happening to my dog and with my wife and with my job and with my friend and with my health and I haven't slept. I'm not feeling good, however, I realize I have some things to be grateful for and I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to use my eyeglasses and focus on that glass is half full. I'm going to say thank you that I had a roof over my head. I'm going to say thank you I had something to eat. I'm going to say thank you that I belong to a support group or that I have a good therapist or my family's on my side or my medication is working or they're taking my case at Voc Rehab to help me get a job. So it's like, it's a choice, huh? What do I have to be great? And then we list one, two, three, four, five, just, on the, just like on the worksheet here, huh? It says, make a list of what do I have to be grateful for today? And we make a list. And again, we may not feel it. We may not feel like zippity doo da. I had a roof over my head last night. But when we stop and think about it, it's like, wow, yeah, thanks. I had a roof over my head last night. I have that to be, so we nurture this attitude of gratitude, huh? And it grows. And as it grows, we become stronger, spiritually and mentally and emotionally. And it really influences the course of our life. Now, the other thing, if we turn the page, you guys, the other thing, number three, that's, that's really helpful Another thing that kind of nurtures this attitude of gratitude is to share our gratitude. And we do that through self-transcendent behavior. You might remember from our class on meaning that self-transcendent behavior means I stop thinking about myself and I start thinking about somebody else. What can I do to make somebody else's life better? Huh? So because I'm grateful for what I've been given in my life, and I realize there are people just like me that have it much worse than me, and I'm grateful for the blessings I have in my life today, so I'm going to pay it forward. I'm going to share those blessings with other people. I'm going to be nice to people. I'm going to be kind to people. I'm going to be loving. I'm going to be courteous. If someone needs some food, I'm going to get them a can of soup and a cup of coffee or a sandwich. I'm going to share what I have with others. Because we know when we're grateful for what we have and then we share it with others, our heart becomes even fuller. One of the worst things in the world, you guys, is that feeling, isn't it? When we feel like I don't have anything to give to the world. I don't have anything to give. So, but when we know we have something to give, I can be kind to someone. I can love someone. I can say good morning, good afternoon. Can I help you? Let me ride the bus with you. Let me carry that package for you. Let me hold the door open for you. Let me take you to breakfast or take you to lunch or buy you a cup of coffee. Let's go to a 12-step meeting or church together. So what that does is that, that makes gratitude even more solid and it brings us into that cycle of life. That attitude of gratitude saves us by getting us back connected with other people and with the world. So I'm hoping now, having gone through one of these 
a, this attitude of gratitude that that's very much a part of living a vital and meaningful life. Now, let's transition to the next concept today. And we want to talk about self-compassion. Self-compassion. Now, sometimes it's hard for a lot of us when we think about self-compassion. What that means is we have a feeling of empathy and care and love for ourselves. And we do loving things toward ourselves so that we have a better life. So sometimes, again, that's hard to get. So I want to share with you a story of compassion. And a lot of you know the story of the Good Samaritan, right? From when you were little kids or even as adults, you know, from scripture. And again, I'm not sharing this as a religious thing to you, even though it's in the New Testament. I'm sharing it with you as a beautiful story of one human being caring about another human being and reaching out to help them. These, these two people came from different tribes. They, they were enemies. They didn't care for each other. They were like the Crips and the Bloods. They didn't care for each other, huh? So somebody asked the great teacher, who's my neighbor? And Jesus tells this story about a man was walking from Jerusalem down to Jericho and he fell in at the hands of robbers. So he's going down the road, and a bunch of robbers beat him up. And they take you know, all of his clothes, they beat him up, and they left him at the side of the road, half dead. So later, he, he was just laying there. And a priest walked by and looked at him and just kept going. And a Levite saw him and just passed by. In this day and age, we'd say a service coordinator looked at him and just walked by. And a psychiatrist looked at him and just walked by and didn't help him out at all. But there was a Samaritan, again, someone from a different tribe who, was kind, who had enmity with his. And he took pity on him. In other words, his heart went out to him. He's at the side of the road. He's got no clothes on. He's naked. He's beat up. He's bleeding. And the man who was an enemy, his heart went out to him. And he bandaged up his room, wounds, he put the man on his donkey, and he took him into Jericho, into the inn. And the next day, he took out two silver coins, and he said to the innkeeper, here, I'm going to give you these two silver coins. Look after this guy. Make sure he heals up. And when I come back through town, if I owe you more money to take care of him, I'll pay you more money, because I just want to make sure he's OK. And so then Jesus said, which one of them is the neighbor, huh? The person who walked by and didn't look at him or the person whose heart went out to him and helped him. So that's a story of compassion. Now, self -co now a lot of people, so many of my patients have said, you know what, Tom? I do have compassion for other people. If somebody needs help, if there's anything I can do to help other people, I will help them. I'll forgive other people. I'll make amends to other people. But when it comes to myself, I'm my own worst enemy. I'm not very good at myself. Sometimes I'm a perfectionist. If I make a mistake, I get out my butt kicking machine and kick my butt around the block. I'm really not very nice to myself. I don't, I don't have good self-esteem. I really don't care for myself. And so in today's class, we're talking about just like this person had this compassion for this other human being, what can we do to nurture greater compassion for ourselves? Again, the great teacher said, love others as you love yourself, huh? So it's love others, but then that last part is as you love yourself. So how do we love ourselves? And we know that by, the, the answer is, am I taking good care of myself? If I'm taking good care of myself, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and socially, then I'm having compassion for myself. I'm loving myself. And again, that's not in a self-centered thing where we say, oh, gee, I'm just so wonderful. We're not being narcissistic. We're being responsible. We're being responsible. So if we take a look at a couple of quotes here, on the page, it'll kind of help us make this idea. There's a, there's a mystic from the Middle Ages who said, 
No one is meaner than the person who is mean to herself. And I've had so many of my patients tell me, I am so mean to myself. I've just beat myself up. Then Dr. Carl Menninger said, love heals. It heals those who give it and those who receive it. And Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then there was somebody that I worked with on Skid Row in Detroit who said, I used to carry my butt kicking machine around with me. When I made a mistake, I would kick my own butt for hours and hours and hours. But then, of course, later he learned to love himself and do the right thing and take good care of himself. So we have a great little 11 question inventory here. Let's go over that. And as we go through that, I'd like you to, to write down like almost never. And again, if you don't have a pen, you can do this later when you have a pen. So almost never, two is sometimes, and three is almost always. So the first question is, I disapprove and, and, and I am judgmental of my flaws and inadequacies. So go ahead and evaluate yourself. Either almost never, sometimes, or almost always. If you have a flaw or shortcoming, do you disapprove of yourself? And are you judgmental toward yourself? Number two, when I'm, obs when, I, when I'm feeling down, I tend to obsess about what's wrong. Almost never, sometimes, almost always. Number three, I try to be loving toward myself even when I'm feeling pain. So even when you're in pain, are you loving toward yourself? Or do you neglect yourself or do you abuse yourself? Number four, I am intolerant toward those aspects of my personality that I dislike. So, you know, we all have parts of our personality that <clears throat> don't work very well for us. Sometimes we're impatient. Sometimes we're greedy or lustful or angry or lazy. But do we judge ourselves and beat ourselves up? Or do we have compassion and empathy for ourselves? Number five, when I fail at something, I try to keep things in perspective. So when I fail, I keep things in perspective. Instead of blowing it all up and making a mountain out of a molehill and say, holy mackerel, I failed. I'm a terrible person. I'm a bad person. I'm not worth anything. Instead, do I have it in perspective and say, you know what? Nobody's perfect. Nobody succeeds at everything. There's something I can learn from this failure and I'm going to go ahead and go out there and try it again and give it the old college try. Number six, when something upsets me, I get carried away with my feelings. This gets back to grounded, centered, and balanced, huh? When something happens and it pushes our button, do we take off? Do we get into hyperarousal? And it's like that story about that guy going through Virginia City on the horse. 35 miles an hour, he's going real fast, and they say, where are you going? He says, don't ask me, ask the horse, huh? So sometimes the horse is like our feelings. Our feelings are running away with us. So do our feelings run away with us, or do we stay grounded and centered and balanced and kind of work things out? Almost never, sometimes, or number three, almost always. And this is an important one, number seven. I frequently feel ashamed of myself. A lot of us have grown up feeling ashamed of ourselves. And so the first step in getting into recovery for a lot of us is first of all recognizing that and then admitting it and saying, you know what, I do feel ashamed of myself and then having somebody to talk to. That's a really important part of healing from shame is being able to share with someone what we feel ashamed of ourselves about, huh? Our family of origin, where we grew up, mistakes we made, maybe how we were victimized or perpetrated against. And to have somebody to talk to about that, that really helps heal shame. And then the other thing, like Dr. Viktor Frankl said, with the defiant power of the human spirit, where he said, say yes to life in spite of everything. So we might say, you know what, today I'm feeling really ashamed 
but I'm not going to hide under the covers. I'm not going to go get higher loaded. I'm going to say yes to life. And even though I'm feeling ashamed, I'm going to act as if. I'm still going to go out there and go to my job, do my volunteering, go to voc rehab, go to therapy, go to the drop-in center, go visit my friends or visit my family. I'm going to act as if. I'm not going to let my shame run my life and have me hiding under the covers. Number eight, when I make a mistake, I pick myself up. I see what I've learned and I get back into it. So almost never, sometimes and always. Number nine, overall, I accept myself for who I am. So think about that for a minute. Where, where are you at with that, you guys? So again, is it almost never, sometimes, or almost always? Overall, I'm accepting of myself who I am. In other words, like we've talked about in other classes, I'm not OK, and you're not OK, and that's OK. huh? Mm -hmm. We're all OK. That doesn't mean we don't have growing to do. That doesn't mean we don't have rough edges, but I'm OK the way I am right now. Or like many people in recovery will say, God doesn't make junk. I'm not a piece of junk. I'm OK. I'm OK the way I am. I'm going to get better. I'm going to work at it. But I'm OK today, just the way I am. Number 10, I have compassion for other people who are hurting. Just like the story of the Good Samaritan. When I see other people hurting, I have compassion for them. Number 11, I practice accepting other people for who they are. And if they make a mistake, I forgive them. So going through these questions, you guys, will give you an idea of where you're at with self-compassion. And, and again, you don't have to fool yourself. Just be honest with yourself, because we all, every day, we have to start off from where we're at. You might have done this inventory and said, wow, I have grown so much in the last month or in the last year or two, this is great, this is great. I've come so far and I want to keep going. Others of you might, you might be feeling discouraged and say, oh man, I did terrible on this inventory. I realize I really don't like myself and I realize I don't take very good care of myself. If that's true, what we want to say is that's okay too. I just need to start developing my treatment plan with my service coordinator, my doctor, my therapist, my counselor. What are the things I need to do to take better care of myself? What do I need to do physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, socially? Because action speaks louder than words, huh? It's one thing to have a feeling of compassion, and that's very important. But just like Forrest Gump said, stupid is as stupid does, huh? <laughs> so self-compassion is as self-compassion does too. Self-compassion is I love myself and I take full responsibility for my life. I need to do those things that my wise mind tells me I need to do with diet, with exercise, meditation, journaling, support group, a good night's sleep and rest, volunteering, going back to work, all of those things, having fun. What are some fun things that I love to do? All of those things are self-nurturing and self-compassionate things to do, which takes us to number seven. What can you do? The question is, what can I do to be more compassionate toward myself? So think about that for a minute. What's one thing? Even if you saw yourself as scoring really well, all of us, we can always keep growing, can't we? We can all, so think about that for a minute. What's something I can do to keep getting more self-compassionate? Again, this idea about love your neighbor as you love yourself. The more we love and care for ourselves, the more love we have to share with the world. And the more love we have to share with the world, the more connected we are, and the more vital, the more vital our life is, and the more meaningful life is. So you see the way this all fits together, you guys? Yeah? <coughs> so
So as we're wrapping up today, let's take a look at some of the themes that we, we looked at. And as you know, with each class, I ask you, So with each class, I always ask you to think about this and say, what's one thing I got out of the class today? What's one thing I got out? When we talked about, do I believe, ask yourself this, do I believe I can lead a, a vital and meaningful life? Am I willing to put on a new pair of glasses and look at things differently? Am I willing to Stop fighting the Chinese finger trap, huh? Stop fighting it. Am I willing to let that beach ball come up? Am I willing to clarify one, two, three, what are my values? And just looking at today's class, do I believe that maybe having an attitude of gratitude, is that a value for you? Maybe it is, maybe not, I don't know. But is that a value for you that you want to commit yourself to being more grateful? The other thing is, is self-compassion, is that a, a value for you? Do you want to grow in being more self-compassionate? And then some other things that we looked at real quickly, we did that mindfulness exercise. And I've asked you to think about reading that every morning. It only takes four minutes to get grounded and centered and balanced. Then again, we talked about a new pair of glasses and that gratitude is an attitude and every day, every day we might want to make a list. One, two, three, four, five. What do I have to be grateful for today? Then in terms of self-compassion, we talked about loving other people and caring about them and helping them. But today with self-compassion, we talked about what can I do to love myself? To love myself. And sometimes love is a feeling, like Scott Peck said. Sometimes love is a feeling, but more often love is an action. So even on those days when I don't feel loving toward myself, do I still do the things that a loving person would do? So that's the general overview of our class today. And as we're finishing up, I hope each of you is choosing one thing that you got out of the class. The other thing I would ask is, what do you need to do to follow up? You need to talk to your service coordinator, your therapist, your psychologist, your doctor, your sponsor, your priest, your minister, your rabbi. Do you want to talk with someone so that you take this in at a deeper level? Because a lot of times processing this information with other people can re be really helpful. So as always, you guys, it's always an honor to spend this time with you. I love spending this time with you. It's very meaningful to me. I hope it was meaningful to you. And I wish you all the very best. Have a really great day, you guys.